Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Hi, this is Angela Fay. I am super excited to welcome Dan Balaban here with us today, who is the founder, president, and CEO of Greengate Power. Now, Greengate Power is a leading Canadian renewable energy company based in Calgary, Alberta. And Dan leads Green, the Greengate Power team focus on the development of high quality renewable energy products. I just want to give you some context of Greengate today. So today, uh, Greengate has successfully developed 450 megawatts of operating wind energy projects in Alberta. And, um, and they're currently the largest operating wind energy project in Canada, the Black Spring Ridge Wind Project. So um, they represent collectively approximately a billion dollars of investment. And they're expected to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 20 million tons over 25 years and provide a clean source of power to over 200,000 homes. So that's just the context for today's discussion. Welcome, Dan. Good morning, Angela. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. How did you land where you are today? Yeah, so I, um, you know, I grew up in uh, uh, Canada's, uh, Canada's oil, oil and gas capital, Canada's energy capital, Calgary, Alberta. Uh, you know, growing up in uh, Calgary, it's uh, pretty difficult uh, not to have some type of exposure to the oil and gas industry. Uh, my father was, uh, my late father was an oil and gas entrepreneur. Uh, so, you know, grew up in, uh, you know, in and around the oil and gas industry. Uh, but, you know, one of the other things that we have here in uh, in Alberta is we've got, we're right on the, you know, doorstep of the Rocky Mountains, you know, beautiful natural landscape. And, uh, you know, just spending time outdoors, I grew a, you know, real love of nature from a, from a very young age. Started my career in technology. I have a degree in computer science from the University of Toronto. Uh, I started my career advising companies on how they could use a new technology called the internet. <laughs> at that time, uh, to improve their businesses. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, a few years later, the internet is, uh, you know, fundamentally transformed the way we conduct in, uh, our business in the world and exchange information. Uh, I uh, start my first uh, entrepreneurial venture was a software company uh, that I started up at the age of 24. Uh, and what we did is we provided uh, internet based solutions. Uh, to help oil and gas companies uh, uh, deal with some of their operational challenges, including uh, reporting greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, I had a successful exit out of that business uh, uh, at the age of 30, back in 2005. And um, I knew that the next thing that I wanted to do uh, was something that had a lasting uh, positive benefit on society, a lasting positive environmental benefit. Uh, but also something that was an exciting uh, business challenge. I did my research and uh, with no previous experience in uh, renewable energy, but a passion for energy, uh, started Greengate Power um, almost 15 years ago uh, with my brother, Jordan. And uh, yeah, our goal was to develop uh, large scale renewable energy projects. Uh, it was at a time where renewable energy uh, you know, was up and coming, but it was nowhere near uh, as much of a mainstream topic, you know, as it is today, uh, you know, but over the last 14 years, uh, we've been uh, successful and developed uh, uh, you know, close to a billion dollars of renewable energy projects that are operating uh, today in Alberta, in the heart of oil country. Um, and uh, next year, we're expecting uh, to start construction on our next billion, uh, including uh, a massive solar project called Traverse Solar, which will uh, be by far and away the largest solar project in Canada, one of the largest in the world, uh, again, right here in the heart of oil country in Alberta. And uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, creating an interesting conversation. Well, and I confess, and, and you know this because I've told you this already, but I have a personal connection because I'm from Vulcan, Alberta, which is a small town in southern Alberta. And, you know, I've always been curious about uh, where we have a cottage, there's a, you know, this this landscape of wind windmills and of course there's more than more than one of those in Alberta and I have a and then I was you know having Thanksgiving dinner this year with uh, friends who work in on some of those uh, projects actually in the landscape as, as quality control people and then the third sort of you know 
in my face notification was my brother went from being an oil and gas electrician to working on a solar farm in like uh, near Claire's home, basically. And I just went, okay, what? Well, something's speaking to me. I, I need, and uh, you know, as I looked at what was happening in renewable energy, your name and Greengate rose to the surface. So uh, hence my, my desire to reach out to you. So I, be, having spent some of my childhood in Alberta, you know, we share that in common. Can you tell me a little bit more on a energetic feeling? What makes Alberta, Alberta in comparison to, you know, other Canadian provinces? You said we are the leading uh, resource sector or province. What, why, what makes that so distinctive here? Yeah, so... Um... I mean, I think it's, you know, fairly well known that Alberta has, uh, you know, phenomenal fossil fuel resources. You know, we have, we're sitting on, uh, you know, some of the largest oil reserves in the world and some really, you know, large gas reserves and, uh, you know, have been producing them, um, you know, successfully for decades. And it's been, you know, it's fueled a lot of economic prosperity uh, here in Alberta. It's fueled a lot of uh, economic prosperity nationally, uh, you know, across Canada. Um, but, you know, with that, uh, you know, we have a real uh, innovative entrepreneurial spirit uh, here in Alberta. It's, you know, it's in our DNA. Uh, right. You know, I think, you know, we're, we, we, we've got to be among the most entrepreneurial places in the world. And, uh, you know, driven by, uh, you, know, the, you know, the innovation that was initially started with solving, uh, you know, oil and gas uh, problems and, you know, finding a way to be efficient oil and gas producers. Uh, you know, it's also a really easy place to do business, very business friendly, uh, friendly province from, you know, local municipality to the provincial government, you know, to the people itself, you know, people are looking for economic uh, development opportunities. Uh, you know, so Alberta, uh, Alberta is a really unique place, but, you know, what we, what we've got now is uh, uh, an energy transition underway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that energy transition is, you know, creating a, a national conversation that I think has become way too polarized. You know, it's been framed as oil and gas versus renewables. And I actually think uh, it's an end. We should be developing our oil and gas and our renewable energy resources. You know, Alberta's also got phenomenal renewable energy resources, which is you know, happy to talk more about as well. Well, in, in my experience, um, you know, my, and my cousin works for, um, it's, it's Encore Energy. I'm having a mind blank at the moment. And there, what's the big energy company that starts with an N? With an E, sorry. I am not sure. Okay, I'll come back to it later. Um, in my experience, quite often the, the companies that produce non-renewable become the leaders in renewable energy. You know, they, they understand that that transition, that in order to get from today's needs to the future's needs, it's quite often those, um, those energy resource sector-based companies that are investing in alternatives. Is that your experience as well? Um, not necessarily. Um, I you know, I'd say that, you know, there are some uh, oil and gas companies, uh, you know, domestic oil and gas companies, uh, you know, in Canada, uh, that have, um, you know, been progressive and have been making uh, investments. But I'd say, uh, you know, generally speaking, we've been a little bit slow uh, in terms of uh, adapting uh, to changing circumstances in the world. You know, in fairness, the changes are happening very quickly. And, it's, you know, you can't turn uh, an entire economy on a, on a dime. Uh, but, I, you know, I do think it's, you know, it's really important for us now uh, you know, to recognize that this transition is underway and, you know, put, you know, put focus and attention on, uh, you know, economic diversification opportunities right. uh, for this province. And I think, you know, renewable energy is, uh, you know, one of the, you know, one of those opportunities and it's a phenomenal opportunity uh, for this province. So let's talk a little bit about Green Gate Power then specifically. Um, those are big words, but paint me a picture mentally. What does Green Gate Power do? Like what, what, if I was to walk into one of your physical um, businesses, what would it look like? Yeah, so you know, so what, so what we are is we're, you know we're a developer of renewable energy projects, and uh, you know the simplest way I can describe it is we take an idea for a renewable energy project and develop it on spec and get it ready for uh, investment by large institutional investors, okay. large utilities. Um, there's a lot of capital 
that uh, is interested in investing in renewable energy, uh, you know, yeah. capital yeah. from all over the world. But there's relative scarcity of good, big opportunities to invest in. And right. we create those investment opportunities. And I'm going to jump to my one of my questions about is, you know, one billion in investment. Can you help me understand how you got there? What, 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 and how do you turn that into ROA? Yeah. So, you know, so what we do is we, um, you know, we invest, um, you know, years and millions of dollars uh, of effort to, you know, to take one of these uh, ideas for a renewable energy project and turn it into an investable opportunity. You know, we have to go through, you know, uh, you know, state, you know, local consultations, you know, extensive mm -hmm. permitting, uh, you know, engineering, you know, putting together key commercial contracts, you know, bringing in the financing. It's, a, you know, it's quite a, you know, a complex process. Uh, and that takes years and, and like I said, millions of dollars of investment. But throughout that process, what we end up doing is we end up de-risking uh, the opportunity. Okay. And through that de-risking, uh, we end up creating uh, development value. And that development value, you know, the way, we make, the way we make money in our business is by monetizing that development value in the form of, uh, you know, upfront payments and, you uh, uh, ongoing economic interest in the projects and ongoing, okay. uh, you know, man management contracts in the project. Okay. That makes sense to me. And you, can you give me a snippet on, you said there's, you know, really only a handful of good quality it, opportunities there. Can you describe what those opportunities are? Well, you know, so, so you know, so what, it, you know, what, uh, you know, institutional investors are looking to do is deploy, you know, large amounts of capital in um, relatively low risk, long-term yielding opportunities. And that's really what, you know, what a renewable energy project is, you know, renewable energy, you know, it's, you know, pretty obvious that you know, there's lots of environmental benefits uh, associated with renewable energy, but you know, what's really driving the investment is, uh, is that they're phenomenal um, investment opportunity. You, you, you deploy, you know, significant amounts of capital as an institutional investor, they have an opportunity to deploy significant, mm -hmm. significant amounts of capital, but, um, the project produces as long as the sun shines and the wind blows, you know, the fuel is free. There's, you know, very uh, predictable operating costs. And the result is it delivers, you know, a really stable long-term yielding asset uh, for right. investors. And so typically it's a long game, right? So there's a, there's an upfront investment and there's an ROI over quite a lengthy period of time because the wind's always going to blow and the sun's going to shine in comparison to say a tech startup that may or may not last for five years. Correct, yeah. Okay, and institutional investors, who are they? Are they who, are, who are your clients? Yeah, so, you know, so we've, um, you know, we've done deals with, um, you know, some of the largest utilities uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, infrastructure funds, pension funds. You okay. know, so our, our first project uh, we sold, we developed and sold at the start of construction to, uh, an Alberta-based uh, IPP called Capital Power, an Alberta-based utility called Capital Power. Our second project, um, Black Spring Ridge, which is the largest uh, mm -hmm. operating wind farm in, in the country, we developed and sold the start of construction uh, to a partnership between Enbridge, you know, the pipeline company, and uh, EDF, which is Energy de France. They're uh, one of the largest utilities in the world, and it, you know, French utility investing in renewable energy in Alberta. Um, but uh, going forward, what we've done is we've evolved our business model so that rather than developing and selling our development at the start of construction, uh, we're developing and uh, retaining an ongoing economic interest uh, in okay. our projects. So, right. you know, for example, our latest solar project, uh, we've brought in uh, a Danish-based uh, infrastructure fund called Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners. Uh, they're the largest uh, renewable energy-focused fund in the world. And what they do is they essentially manage pension fund money and uh, are there, you know, various pension funds vehicle to invest in renewable energy and they're investing uh, in renewable energy uh, through one of our projects. And it'll actually be their first uh, investment in Canada. They've done, you know, billions of dollars of projects all over the world, but this will be their first in Canada. So we've got domestic, we've got French, we've got Danish investments. Are there any other countries that are kind of in the pipeline for seeing Canada's investment opportunity yeah i mean this is a story that's you know not well told not well told enough but you know there's there's been billions of dollars uh, invested by um you know some of the largest um leading uh foreign investors uh in the world in canadian renewable energy you know so in alberta 
We have German companies that are active here, Italian companies, French companies, Portuguese companies, Spanish companies. You know, this is, this is an industry that uh, is a multi-billion dollar opportunity and is already, you know, there's already billions of dollars of renewable energy projects under construction in Alberta today. And, you know, it's, right. and it's not a, you know, it's not, a, I think, a story that's uh, well told enough because I think it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's really good news, you know, coming from a place that, uh, you know, is going through some difficult economic times you know, some reputational challenges. And I think uh, you know, this, is a, this is a bright light in Alberta's economy right now. One question I have, uh, and I'll, I'm not sure if I'm quite using the right words, but I have this feeling that, you know, your, your change of business model from selling to keeping an investment is good for Canada, right? Like it's, it's we're not selling out. We are maintaining some, you know, of our own direct investment um, is that, did I kind of capture that right as far as the change of business model? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're quite uh, excited about the, you know, the prospect of owning renewable energy uh, assets long term, you know, we, you know, for all the same reason that uh, our investors in our projects are wanting to own these assets, uh, you know, we're wanting to do the same thing, you know, but I, but I do see, you know, a challenge for Canada in terms of, uh, you know, its international position. You know, generally speaking, uh, Canadian companies are not uh, growing aggressive globally. Generally speaking, right. it's right. large global companies that are aggressively grow growing into the Canadian market. Uh, you know, which is uh, which is uh, you know just something that is the reality of the way Canadian business uh, seems to unfold. There are obviously exceptions uh, to that, but I think for us to be beneficiaries of you know foreign direct investment in clean energy. Uh, at this time where, you know, um, clean energy is one of the greatest, uh, you know, economic opportunities. I think Mark Carney recently said that, uh, you know, the energy transition is the greatest uh, uh, commercial opportunity of our generation. Uh, I would agree with him. And uh, I think Canada is, you know, an attractive place for foreign investors to invest. You know, we've got a stable political environment. Uh, we have a generally, a, you know, a open for business um, attitude. And, uh, you know, in the case of renewables, some phenomenal uh, fossil fuel, or sorry, some phenomenal renewable energy uh, resources as well. Dan, if you could wave a magic wand and say, I would love this country to invest in Canada next with you, who, who, would, you, who would you love to be working with? I mean, uh, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, any particular, uh, particular favorites, but you know what, I, you know, there is one company that I really, uh, really admire and that's, uh, and that's Tesla. You know, I think, uh, you know, not only do they produce, uh, you know, some of the best electric vehicles in the world, but it's really, it's, it's really the vision uh, that they have. And, uh, you know, it's, it's more than just an automo you know, electric uh, automobile company. What it is, is it's a, uh, what they're building is a, an integrated clean energy company. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's really exciting. You know, the, one of the components of Tesla that I think I'm most excited about and that, you know, relates to what we do uh, in renewable energy is batteries. Uh, the prospect mm -hmm. of battery storage coupled with renewables to allow um, a solar project to produce energy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even when the sun's not shining, uh, you know, by producing right. energy that's stored in batteries. That's really what's going to enable a uh, you know wholesale uh, transition towards electrification. Well, and it's it's interesting because in my mind I was as I'm sleeping through and preparing for this interview in my mind I think well really energy companies are uh, I mean I mean the sun shines and the wind blows I just personally Angie have no way of harvesting that resource and making it relevant to, you know, plugging something into my, in my home or, um, and so really in my mind, you guys are, you know, the keys to harvesting that energy, storing it and distributing it in to a way that consumers and industries can benefit. That's sort yeah, of absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But one of the things that uh, uh, a lot of people may, may not realize is there's no way to store uh, electricity at a large scale today. Uh, the, uh, the electricity system gets matched up in real time 
with supply and demand. So when you turn on the lights in your living room, there's someone in you know, a team at a control center that needs to make sure that there's on the other side generators that are uh, producing the amount of energy to match up with that demand in real time. So what ends up happening is you know, with battery storage, that allows energy to be produced and renewables uh, you know, is where this applies the most, is energy to be produced and stored for later during peak times when that energy right. is, uh, you know, when there's yeah. higher energy demand. Uh, so that doesn't exist at a large scale today. You know, there are some examples of that with hydro that are operating, but in general, it's a technical challenge that exists today with, you know, the wide scale, wide scale adoption of, uh, of renewables. But like I said, uh, you know, I'm very bullish uh, batteries. And I think it's a problem that's uh, going to be solved here very shortly and going to enable again, wide scale adoption of renewables. Interesting. So uh, the Teslas of the world, welcome. We want you to come to Canada. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. You know, Build I, your batteries here. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the mission. I, that's going to be our title, I think, for our, <laughs> for our, our podcast here. I'm curious. Uh, um, I listen to the news. I read periodicals. I read magazines. I, I listen to people and, you know, the, they'll say, ooh, you know, it's all about clean power, right? Not uh, clean energy. Dan, what does that mean? What 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 is what does it mean? What are the measurables? What are the checklist things? What are, what are the the detail around clean power or clean energy? Yes, yeah. yeah. so, you know, so the energy transition is uh, you know fundamentally about decarbonizing uh, our energy system, reducing the amount of CO two uh, pollution that's you know emitted into the atmosphere as a result of um, the energy that we uh, produce and consume. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that's, there's many different uh, ways to achieve that, um, you know, and many different uh, new technologies that are going to be part of the mix. I'd say fundamentally, though, it's really about electrification. So okay. moving from what I would call molecules to clean electrons. If you think about the way we... Uh, produce and consume most of our energy today, it's, uh, you know, through burning molecules, you know, you know, started off with burning wood and then it ended up burning coal and now we burn gas and that, you know, oil and natural gas, you know, burning something to produce com combustion, which creates right. energy. But what we're moving to is a, a new paradigm, which is, uh, you know, where we're producing clean electrons directly from solar panels or from wind farms, taking those clean electrons transmitting them directly into the vehicles that we that we drive electric vehicles and uh you know storing that energy uh in batteries mm -hmm. again so it could be used for later moving from you know again molecules to uh you know a system that's based on clean electrons now there you know there's pieces uh you know it's not like our entire energy system can be electrified uh, you know a good chunk of it likely can but there's going to be pieces of our energy system that can't and that's where you know, there's talk of things like hydrogen, um, you know, that, 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 that's out there. Um, you know, uh, hydrogen is a fuel that can be burned, but it doesn't produce CO2 uh, pollution. Right. Uh, as long as you create the hydrogen in the first place with uh, CO2 free electricity. Uh, you know, so there's lots of different uh, things. There's geothermal that's being talked about. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of different, um, you know, pieces of this, but ultimately it's about, uh, you know, decarbonizing our energy system. Right. So for me, sometimes I, I meet a business decision maker or an entrepreneur and you have that feeling that they're successful. It, you know, it doesn't come from their appearances, luxuries or lifestyle. It comes from their strength, their poise, their understanding and an energetic all knowing in relation to the impact that they're making. And for me, the difference is, you know, who they are is what they're doing. And Dan, you are one of those people for me. So you have like a, an energy about you that I just, I feel like you're my, my all knowing guy in relation to the transition of energy. So um, uh, thank you for that's, 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 sharing. That's very kind of you to say, thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying that Angela. And so well, I have a couple of, these are more personal questions now really is, you know, your clients are these in, in industrial investors, but who are you really serving in your life's work? 
um, I really feel like I'm uh, I'm serving the world, um, uh, you know, humanity. Uh, I mean, it, it sounds you know it kind of sounds sounds corny to say that, but um, it's the truth. I, I mean, I ultimately believe that uh, we're all here, every single one of us. Uh, to make the world better in some way and, uh, you know, grow from our journey on this rock floating in space. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I actually don't believe this is the end. I believe this is uh, part of a, you know, an infinite journey that, that we're all on. But while we're here, uh, we're here to, uh, to, do, to do good in some way. And uh, we all have uh, that ability. Uh, it's in, you know, different abilities for all of us. Uh, but I actually, I just feel really fortunate that I've tapped into mine. Like this is, uh, this is something that I'm truly passionate about. Um, uh, uh, good at it. You know, our company is good at it. Uh, and we are having an impact. And I feel very, you know, a positive impact. And I feel very fortunate uh, to be able to do that and to be able to, uh, you know, to integrate uh, business and, uh, you know, doing uh, good in the world, I think is uh, just about the greatest thing uh, that one can embark on. Absolutely. You're a yes and guy, right? And at least that's what I picked up. And you have a TED Talk, Moving Past Polarization. To me, the moving past polarization is probably one of the most important um, essences in any conversation. You know, the so in relation to the work that you're doing, what is the core message for you that you want to share here in the moving past polarization? You know that um, that it, it's, it's not a black and white uh, issue. It's not a binary. It's not a binary uh, issue. Uh, there's uh, you know reasonable positions on both sides. Uh, there's people's lives who are uh, being impacted uh, by you know what I believe is a necessary uh, energy transition. Uh, you know we're living in a, in a, I believe we're living in a way that's unsustainable. Uh, for human civilization, and unless we change, uh, you know, we're we're not going to continue. I don't know, you know, what that time is going to be. I don't know how far that is in the past. Some people say, you know, we're imminent danger. Others say it's long way away. But what I know is that we can't continue with the status quo indefinitely. So we do we we do need to change. But through that transition, there's people that are impacted. We need to show compassion uh, to people that. Uh, whose lives are being disrupted and uh, there needs to be compassion shown uh, on both sides and understanding shown on both sides, because ultimately we need to move together uh, towards the future of prosperity. I love that, which is a perfect segue into a question that I'm dying to ask. And, uh, and I've, in order to do this, we kind of need to jump into an imagination station, if you like, and leave all social pressures and constructs at the door. So your work title, you the need to earn money, you know, how the how things are currently done, reimagining systems that are in place, things like that. So, Dan, if you were to jump into this imagine station and, and imagine the future of high quality renewable energy, what does it look or feel like in 50, 100 years? Yeah, so yeah, you know, in 50 or 100 years, uh, you know, I think that is uh, a time frame where, uh, you know, we could see uh, that there would be very, very little to no fossil fuels uh, being consumed in the world. Uh, you know, it's a long way out, but, you know, we're visioning, uh, visioning out. So, you know, it's a, it's a totally electric uh, system. You know, we're producing our energy, uh, you know, that's clean from the sun, from the wind, you know, uh, traveling in, uh, in electric vehicles, probably autonomously. Uh, and that's probably not 50 years out. That's, uh, that's probably closer, uh, probably flying vehicles, I would assume, uh, <laughs> as well. I think it's going to be a, uh, a the air will smell uh, fresher. It'll be quieter. You won't hear the rumbling mm -hmm. of, uh, of engines and planes uh, flying through the sky. It'll be much quieter and, uh, and serene. Uh, I'm an optimistic person, so I guess I'm creating a bit of a of a utopian vision. But uh, you know, if um, if one's not op not optimistic, then uh, then what's the point of uh, you know continuing to try to make things better? I think uh, I think the world, and you know, I'm hoping it's also a world of much more economic equality. You know, I think mm -hmm. uh, we can't continue with uh, you know with uh, wealth being uh, 
you know, uh, unevenly distributed, distributed and increasingly concentrated in the hands of uh, very few. I think we need a you know much more uh, equitable uh, economic society. I think it can be done within the capitalist system. Uh, you know, I think Absolutely. capitalism is uh, is something that drives innovation and drives motivation and and has, has enabled us to achieve amazing things. But I think we need much more compassionate capitalism going forward, and that's uh, that's the future I'm excited for. Well, and related to um, uh, this conversation about the future of capitalism, I interviewed Lior um, from the uh, Canadian Sustainability. Uh, group. I think you probably know him. He's in Calgary, Leo, Leo Rothschild. And they, yeah, as an organization, he's a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, and they are tipping into the question, what is the future of capitalism? Um, you know, and it's related to social capitalism, of course. But uh, I, I just want to kind of tie in a couple of interesting concepts is, you know, the, I, I think the hardest part is imagining the future. Um, you know, but you've got practical experience you were you were at the forefront of introducing the concept of the internet to companies like 20 years ago 20 years ago and now look at where we are with the internet today so i'm going to kind of leave dan as as a thought leader in regards to the transition of of um the transition of energy in canada and go if he can think it maybe it can happen in 15 years so and if you could wave a magic wand and give, uh, you know, a practical list of consumer and industrial behavior changes that we need to make today to get to that future, preserve, the, you know, cre- make that future happen, what would those, what would that list of behavior changes be? That's a good question. Um you know, I would start off with um, energy literacy. I think I think we generally have um, you know very poor uh, ener- energy literacy, and you know in the mainstream. You know, I, I work in the industry, so if my energy literacy is high, uh, but the, you know there's other areas where uh, I, I probably uh, you know don't have the level of expertise that I should. But you know, in the case of energy, I'd say uh, you know uh, we don't understand it very well. I don't think most people understand how the energy is produced. Right. You know, what's the pollution associated with it? Um, uh, how much energy, uh, you know, different things that I do end up consuming. Uh, you know, so I think, you know, understanding uh, the, the, you know, where energy comes from, how it's, con- how it's uh, produced and consumed, how much we end up consuming by doing different things. Just that basic energy literacy, I think, is uh, where we need to start. And then I think, uh, you know, uh, companies, and industry uh, need to heed, you know, what they're seeing from global investors, which is, you know, an increased emphasis on uh, what's called mm. ES- ESG investing, environment, uh, uh, social and governance based investing. And, uh, you know, investors are increasingly not just investing in ways that uh, are trying to maximize profit, they're, they're trying to maximize profit within the context of ESG, maximize profit while doing good at the same time. And, uh, you know, I think rather than, uh, you know, denying uh, that that's a trend, I think we need to embrace that trend. Uh, you know, Canada is uh, among the most uh, just societies in the world. And, uh, you know, so in this world of ESG investing, you know, we should, we should bode very well. I mean, we're a great place, a great destination for that, uh, but we need to embrace, uh, uh, embrace uh, that change. And, um, and innovation, we need to, you know, we need to focus our innovation and creativity on solving this challenge. Uh, I think, you know, denying again, you know, the the trends that are going on in the world doesn't serve us. Uh, we need to embrace them, embrace the technology, and contribute to the, uh, you know, to the knowledge base of uh, of human civilization. Because I think Canada uh, and Alberta are extremely well positioned to do so. Absolutely. On a personal note, Dan. What are the three sources of energy and ideas that fuel you personally in, you know, fueling your thinking, your business, your team? What are your sources? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, the the idea, you know, like, like I was saying personally, the idea of uh, aligning, you know, business with, uh, you know, some type of good, uh, you know, I think is is really important. 
But, you know, I think what really, you know, what really fuels uh, myself and our team is uh, proving uh, out that, you know, difficult things uh, can be achieved. You know, when we, you know, when we started in, uh, you know, you know, 15 years ago, uh, you know, there were very few large scale uh, renewable energy projects, you know, wind or solar projects in this country. You know, there were some, but we, you know, we, we uh, pursued it with an ambition um, that, you um, you know, was unprecedented at that time and you know, it was still unprecedented. We're still, you know, developing the largest, you know, precedent setting uh, projects in this country. And uh, I think we're, you know, we're really, we kind of uh, enjoy the role of disruptor uh, a little bit. Uh, right. But, uh, but, you know, we also, uh, you know, want to create, uh, you know, good returns for our shareholders. We're focused on that, you know, so it's trying to, you know, find an alignment uh, of all those things. But everybody on our team is extremely passionate about this industry, extremely passionate uh, about what we do. And I just feel extremely fortunate to work with uh, every single person at the Green Gate team. Awesome. Dan, how can people get a hold of you after today? Yeah, you should, you can uh, check out our company at greengatepower.com. Uh, I'm active on LinkedIn, uh, Dan Balaban, and uh, on Twitter, Balaban underscore Dan. And is, uh, are we going to see you anywhere in 2021? I know, you know, it, there's not as many events and, and in-person meetings happening, but are, are you starring anywhere as a speaker or anything soon that we can tap into your energy? Um, there, you know, uh, you know, I do uh, regularly uh, speak at uh, various, uh, various events. Um, uh I'm speaking next week at the uh, School of Corporate Sustainability at the University of Calgary, the virtual uh, event that they're putting on. Um, but uh, you know, keep an eye keep an eye out for it. You'll see you know see announcements on my LinkedIn or, or Twitter, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, next year will be great for our company and great for renewables in Canada as we start construction on our Traverse Solar project. Hopefully, start construction on our Traverse Solar project. Awesome. And is there anything that you need to get that? project off the ground any 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 uh sources of energy that we can help you no we just uh we need to get through the uh you know the final uh you know commercial pieces of the project and uh you know get our uh our investor comfortable to make you know make the final investment decision uh send us good vibes good vibes coming your way dan thanks so much thank you very much angela